Hey guys, I'm Julia Cunningham hanging out backstage at EW's Pomp Fest with the cast, crew, creators, writers, musicians, everybody of Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's start, Rachel. Let's start with you. I'll have you introduce yourself and, and your character or and or role involved with Crazy Ex Girlfriend for everybody. Uh, I'm Rachel Bloom. I'm the co-creator and uh, uh, star of Crazy Ex Girlfriend. I I play Rebecca Bunch, the quote unquote Crazy Ex Girlfriend. But is she? Is she? That's what I'll say. Exactly. I'm gonna yeah. say. Still deciding. Yeah. Let's, yeah. <laughs> um, my name is Vincent Rodriguez III, and I play Josh Chan, the object of Rebecca Bunch's affection. Yeah, you do, In baby. West Covina, California. Shout and, out to West Covina. Yeah, and shout out to West Covina, which on October 21st is now officially Crazy Ex-Girlfriend Day. Which is so exciting what? for us. Wait, so whoa. It just had happened. That's yeah, incredible. That Congratulations. Oh yeah. We'll talk about that later. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm Gabrielle Ruiz, and I play Valencia, and we all know who I am. But season two, <laughs> but season two, like I'm also an ex-girlfriend. You are an ex-girlfriend. I was like, and, and you're just not, we'll like find out. in the ether right now as well, which we'll get yes. to. Oh, don't yeah. you worry. Oh yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. you worry. Don't you guys yeah. worry. I think about you're gonna it. come out with just flames, but okay. dot dot dot. <gasps> it's real good. Uh, <laughs> I'm Vela Lavelle, and I play Heather, um, who is uh, Rebecca's neighbor in West Covina. A uh, cool neighbor. I'm the coolest neighbor. <laughs> the cool neighbor that ever happened. Yeah. Hi there, I am TV's Pete Gardner, and um, I play Daryl Whitefeather on the show, and I'm also the show's dance captain. <laughs> and then I Just assist an important role. the dance yeah. captain. Yeah. Yeah. Pete's the main dance captain. But he's the main dance yeah. captain. The only dance captain. You run the dojo. <laughs> yeah, he has I run the, the dojo. Hat. I have the hat. I'm Rachel Great. I play Audra Levine, and... Uh, I, I rap on the show. <laughs> <laughs> She's our so resident rapper. It's, it's, it's true. true. Rapper. It's true. Yep. Rapper. That's what I do. Uh, oh, wow, it just got real loud. Um, I'm Aline Brosh McKenna. I'm the co-creator, executive producer uh, of the television program, MME. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I'm Jack Dolgen. I'm a writer and songwriter on the show. Which is incredible. I kind of want to ask you two first, just in terms of like setting up songs in episodes when you're writing, when you get stuck, do you just write song break, continue on writing? Like, how do you decide where you're going to push the plot forward via music? Sometimes we do that. I mean, it, it all, it's like writing a musical. It's, it's what are the emotional highs, what are the emotional lows? And so that, nine times out of ten, is our guide, and it comes after we have the episode at least outlined. Um, and then, depending on who feels strongly about the song, one of us will take a pass on it. Uh, it and so the songs are always some combination of, of me, Jack, and Adam Schlesinger. So we have 12 writers and we have three songwriters. And it was funny, when we started, I thought, oh, eventually the writers will be writing songs. And you know what? <laughs> it turns out that songwriting is a completely different thing from script yeah. writing. And there's been actually very little of that. Um, sometimes the writers contribute jokes and thoughts, but um, songwriting is really a specific thing. And so we have the three songwriters, and when we get to a point in the episode where we know an area, they will sit down and talk about it, and one of the three of them usually takes the lead in saying, okay, I got this one. How often does it happen where you will either give Jack a phrase like, they just broke up, or they're about to have sex? Let's figure out from there where we're going to actually filter through the actual references or the music. Like, what what sort of are the basis of the of the songs? You know, that happened uh, uh, with the first episode of the season with Aline, where Aline we knew we wanted a song, and Aline was sort of like saying what the song something about what the song should be like. It should be like we should definitely not have sex right now. And Rachel and I were like, okay, give us twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, that song really that song really really wrote itself. Um, and sometimes it's really easy, and sometimes it's it's excruciating and sometimes it goes through a million drafts and sometimes it's like okay well this needs to be a song about you know yearning and then what what form can it take and what genre could it be I mean it's such an open such an open open thing in a lot of ways it's such a blank slate yeah I mean it it's hard because you're you're doing two specific things you need both a joke that's specific and that can heighten throughout the song like a sketch, but also something that fits within story and illuminates something about the characters in her life. And so it's actually a very small target that you're trying to hit and it can get challenging, but when you, the hardest part is just finding what is that target and once you find it, writing to that still isn't easy, but finding the target's the hardest part. 
Obviously, you guys uh, factor in like the entire season, but at what point had you decided at some point Rebecca was going to end up with Josh? How early on? When did you guys know at some point that you two were going to at least hook up? We've always known that since the moment we, when we yeah, pitched we the show. We knew that the end of the first season was going to be something where her thing works. I mean, you know, she's way smarter than he is. Yep. She no, thinks circles indeed. around him. I mean, he's, and you know, he, he would ordinarily never in his life have been confronted with someone like this who's really sort of running circles around him. So um, even though right now their relationship uh, is is a bit what we call exploitation, where he's taking advantage of her a little bit. But on the other hand, she's really cornered him into this situation to begin with. So, you know, for us, it's not, it's really not about good guys or bad guys. It's sort of about what people need and their wants and their obsessions and their flaws. And that sort of has drawn them together in this moment. Right. Uh, when are we getting Valencia? Oh, when is she's like coming. The, the, she's the coming. fire, she's coming. the dragon's Don't breath? She's coming. It. <laughs> she's coming. How will it be unveiled when we see oh, her? Uh, it's so coming. <laughs> That's all so you'll it's give us. No spoilers. No spoilers. It's coming. No spoilers. It'll be worth it, though. It's going to be so <laughs> worth it. I assume it's, so it's going it. to be terrifying. You it's know, in the first season, great <laughs> way. In the first season, she was she was thrown into Rebecca's face. You know, like she wasn't expecting to see her. And in this right. season, I feel like she needs a little bit of time to make an appearance. And by the way, Valencia in the first season was mostly right. Rebecca was yes. incredibly yes. out to steal Spoke her boyfriend. Truth. And so Valencia has approached most women with that level of kind of you're a threat because Valencia in some ways is very fear-based. But in the case of Rebecca, she was right. <laughs> Yeah. You're welcome. And, and um, Valencia was supposed to be in one episode, maybe two episodes, um, but Gabrielle did such a masterful job of inhabiting the sort of mean girl, bitchy girl thing oh, Thank in such you. a different way that we kept bringing her back and bringing her back and bringing her back. So this season she's a uh, regular, series regular. Woo. I didn't get killed Amazing. off the island. Basically. Yeah, yeah. I kept asking. Thank I kept asking. She's like, when is she Have you seen killed? the social media turn in the Josh versus Greg or Greg versus Josh? No. It's always felt very back and forth, my observation. Yeah. I always see, I see either one. I see people go like, I'm really sorry, but hashtag Team Greg. I'm like, I don't care. Well, it's it's, a, it's all going to change. It's funny be, that it was funny to us that people approached it that way. And I guess we kind of started it because we, we had a Team T-shirt in a very early episode. Yeah. Um, right. But ours were Team Rebecca and Team Valencia, right? right. Yeah. Um, but we, um, we didn't really see it that way because really kind of not any of them are prepared or mentally ready to have any kind of serious relationship. So mm -hmm. it's amusing to us that people want these characters to get together no matter how flawed they are, no matter how screwed up the circumstances are, that people, we just are so primed to root for couples. Right. Um, and so people will say, yeah, you know, Greg's an alcoholic, but they're so cute together, you know? <laughs> yeah, and Josh is really exploiting her, but they've got a lot of sexy chemistry. And it's, it's, it's a nice reflection of what people do in real life, which is they kind of look past real problems and real uh, differences that are difficult to bridge and just think we love each other so woo! And also I, I just want to add that like a lot of the things I think people I'll see tweets like not right like maybe I'm crazy but I'm team Greg and like a lot of the things they point out the reason like it's, it's conscious on our part of course yeah. he's the underdog right that she doesn't notice that's that's embedded into the show and so it's it's sometimes it's very conscious things we're, we're doing right. and then of course there's the Daryl and White White Josh. Josh and Daryl. So yeah, that's course. a team that's, you know, way ahead of all. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the team. team. Well, actually, <laughs> that's the team that's to watch. The that's the team. Team. Your money so well, that's the team that, I, that has audience, the healthiest the audience, relationship, right? The audience right? knows that. I mean, the audience knows that those are healthy people in a productive relationship. Right. And they know that. They really do know that. And they, as soon as that, we started doing that, the, the audience, our fans, were really vibrating about that couple. And so, you know, a lot of ways, they are much more um, mentally stable than any of the people in the main triangle. Oh, Daryl and Y. Joe killing it. Yeah. Hashtag Y. Daryl. <laughs> killing it. But there's an incredible Josh moment better, even yeah. in the most recent episode where Greg does reveal to Rebecca that he meant to go and tell her that he loved her. And yeah. I was surprised that we're seeing like this side of Greg. And it's going to be sort of like this continuous evolving character, I'm sure. Yeah. Are we going to recognize all of the characters by the end of season two? Or is it everything going to be completely up in the air? Oh, no. Well, you know, it's, well, a, they're, they're, it's an evolution of the characters. So it's not, you know, it's... Are we leaking to the press about the vampire thing? Or there are going to be yeah. a vampire. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, They're nope. vampires. Okay. Yeah. They're all vampires. I thought we went into yeah. dragons. into the vat of blood. <laughs> the right, right. The hand comes yeah. up. Yeah. Is that how vampires are formed? Well, I just watched the end of their show before our show, and there was a thing where they lowered someone into a vat of blood, and then, oh or I think yeah, it was blood, and then like a hand shot out. 
Which is not a spoiler because it was Dear a Vampire show. Diary, so what the f***? <laughs> unknown. <laughs> unknown vampire activity. Next level. Truly unknown. Well, what can you sort of tease? For, because the show has now moved to Fridays. As you said, it's, it's paired with Vampire Diaries in its final season on the CW. What can you sort of tease for us just in general? What, what, I mean, don't give anything away, but what, what, what's maybe the most dramatic musical number we'll hear this season? Oh, oh man. There's well, so many good ones. What's the most dramatic? What do you mean yeah. dramatic? Like, like, like not funny or like? I, I would say which one is going to be one of those moments that we're not expecting, maybe? Oh. Well, we always have like a silly song, and I'll say there's one song right now that we're really considering, which is like Heavy Boobs in its um, oh, non sequiturousness. Because, okay. you know, most of That's also Rachel an idea saying, that we've had for a while. Yeah. As Rachel was very intelligently saying, you know, the, so the songs are driven by the storylines, but every once in a while there's a song idea which is so stupid, <laughs> so incredibly <laughs> stupid, Thanks, that it God. will not be denied. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. do imagine the writer's room a little bit like a beautiful mind, which is like lyric sheets and images and story. Well, it is. And but every time I look in there, I'm always like, whoa. What is that? Yeah. What are you guys doing making magic and blank? paper like it's and we're all just just like plowing pistachio nuts into our faces yeah and cupcakes <laughs> and almond cookies everyone how really is are playing the guitar working out <laughs> lyrics working and things out. Yeah. yeah, we also um, whenever we do table reads, we have uh, in a, a room where there's a lot of the set pieces oh, yeah. down now on the wall. So it's adding and adding and adding, and I don't know how much more space we have for that. Well, we used to have nothing in that room, and it, it was, was bland. so depressing. And sad. It was so like doing a reading in the in a like a, in a rec room at Sing Sing. Yes. And at some point, we just had we had so many no, um, no. set things. That but were then just what they did in the, the place. in the medium time, they put up they surrounded the room with just six posters <laughs> of season one. And so we were just surrounded Staring with shots of me in that balloon. And we're like, Rachel this there. needs to change. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, congratulations on season two. I love the show so much. It's Thank an honor you, to meet all of you guys. And Crazy Ex-Girlfriend airs on the CWs on Fridays. Catch up. Buy it on iTunes. Buy the songs on iTunes. I mean. Watch it. Also the yeah. CW app. And the CW, CW app, app as well. Catch up as well. No excuses, yeah. guys. No yeah. excuses. Thanks. There's so many literally places no, to watch Like, it. literally no excuses. Yeah. yeah. No. Like, literally. Like, literally. Thanks for watching. <laughs> binge season one in two Rachel and a half days. Binge catch up. Rachel catch will be up. mad if you don't. Oh, if you don't no, watch the show, mad. I'm she'll actually personally offended and personally upset next. Yes. She gets upset. As you should be. Oh, if I meet people, I'm furious. And guys, thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned for more from EW's Pop Fest. Bye. Bye.